Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for April 15th of 2022. Let me shut off the sounds on the computer here this morning. All right, so just checking in to see who's all here this morning. Um, yeah, thank you all for being here. Okay. I know last week was pretty flipping intense. Last 50 questions Friday, well, last Friday in general, oh my goodness, it was an intense energy. I think it might have been just a little bit high on the waves there. Um, it's been an interesting week too. Definitely, everybody's going through a lot of strangeness as we're moving through things, but it is all so absolutely beautiful. So... Well, hello. Hey, Valerie from Colorado. I just happen to be near you this morning as well. Susanna from Florida. Well, and hey, we got somebody visiting us from France today. Good to see you. All right. So we do have some questions from uh, emails today. So we'll go through some email questions and then we will jump onto some questions here. Again, if you're live, please do drop your questions over on the questions tab. Um, if you are watching after the facts on YouTube and you'd like to join us, then just sign up for the newsletter at Twisted Sage. So, all right. And good morning from Texas, California. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm sure we'll do a meditation later, but, uh, we might as well set the space and do our quick breath into the heart. So just putting your attention onto the physical heart and connecting heart to heart with the earth and just draw in, breathe in that energy, that light of the earth up into the heart and then connect heart to heart to creation source soul creator god central son of the soul breathe in that light into the heart i feel a lot of you connecting to that central sun soul this morning and that is a beautiful way to connect and then you just become that column of light that's grounded, connected in the heart space. And we're all kind of floating off there to be as that creator sun that we are, which is perfectly fine this morning. All right. So here we go. We will jump into some questions here. Thank you all for being here today, by the way. Um, appreciate that you are here and the support. Uh, so a first question uh, comes from Kaz. I have a 12 inch square near infrared light. If three golden fire tensor rings are placed on the back of this will it help to relieve nerve pain. Well, so basically when you use um, like the any of the infrared um, and you use it with a tensor ring, it it's just like using um, like LEDs that we used to use. Um, basically the tensor field will work together with that that far infrared and basically it allows for a better penetration into the body because of the carrier waves that come through the ring and whatever you're putting through that ring like light waves electromagnetic sound um, those frequencies those energetics come through the ring and then they carry energetics from the ring as well. So not only does the ring create this layer of harmonized energy, when you put through it that sound, that light, that frequency, as it comes through, you're getting the energetics of both. And they, and of course, when we work with the rings and it harmonizes, it's like the sum of the two is, well, what we receive is greater than the sum of the two. Um, so it just amplifies everything. Um, so using far infrared or near infrared light with the um, 
tensor rings placed on the back of that light panel will help to bring in more. Um, now, as far as clearing pancreatic tumors, that is between um, you and your soul. And I truly believe that we can do anything right now um, as far as our self-healing and clearing. And, you know, the, the tools are great for that. But um, if I was going to work on a pancreatic cyst, I would work with Gaia and my central sun soul. Um, the tools are phenomenal, but it's truly that consciousness work, you, that are the most powerful thing in all of creation. Um, the tools just kind of help bring those reminders to us. So let's see. We do have some more questions here online, so let's get to those. Let's see. Oh, and I put a polls tab up over here. You guys, I don't know if you see the polls if you're here live. Um, but basically, if you go down there to polls, it's just asking about emails for um, Livestorm here on whether to send them out five minutes before or an hour before, because we have the option and I don't want to send out emails both times. And I'm not sure if you get a whole lot of emails, if you also receive an email when um, the event starts. So if you would like to add a comment there about your, about how you feel about the emails that come from Livestorm, um, just trying to make things smooth and easy for everybody. Cause I know I don't like a whole lot of emails myself. All right. So we have another question here this morning. Um, and this is from somebody who's not able to attend uh, 50 questions Friday because of the time, the time difference where they live. Um, Elif, I hope I'm saying the name right. Beautiful name. E L I F. So Elif asked, does the regeneration and golden fire frequencies of the infinite light pendant and the energetics of the Taurus pendant resonate with the sacred cubit, lost cubit, empowerment cubit, or those that Slim Sperling worked with? Or are these the energies of the two pendants with the newer cubits and the other etheric templates that was brought forward by myself? So, Thank you for asking the question. Um, would love to just take a moment and and share that information. Uh, well, um, try to wade through this information about the different cubit measures, the etheric templates, those that Slim helped to create. Um, so let's just start with the sacred cubit, um, which was the 144 megahertz. Then he had the 177 megahertz Slim did. Um, Slim started working with the 188, which they called the empowerment. Um, that really didn't get released until after he died. But <clears throat> those first three cubit measures, the 144, 177, 188, were simply a tensor ring. They created a field that had a resonant frequency of that specific megahertz within it. Now, those were the ones, uh, again, that Slim worked with, but then we started working with some others, such as the 333 and the 764. Um, when we got to the galactic qubit, um, and these were all brought in by professional dowsers, friends of ours um, that doused in these specific qubit measures. The galactic qubit was one that, um, that was where things shifted with the tools in that they weren't a static frequency. Within the galactic qubit, you could contain, you know, it contained multiple frequencies and properties um, within that galactic qubit. And that galactic is the first one that started to connect us more to our soul because when I would hold on to that galactic ring, I could see that there was 12 of me, soul aspects altogether, 12 of us that would hold on to that ring. Um, so that was the the first incorporating of, of your soul more fully in through the use of these tensor fields. So after the galactic came the STU, the standard Teotihuacan unit. Now that particular measurement um, wasn't doused in. That is an ancient measurement used in the city of Teotihuacan in, in Mesoamerica. 
as well as um, from my understanding that cubit has also been found in Egypt and other places on the planet. So that specific sacred measurement, we then created um, with the STU measure, the balance and harmony rings. The balance and harmony was simply the authoric template, the energetic component to that STU measure. So we had the cubit measure, and then we had the energetic component, which um, the harmony, balance and harmony, was the first to contain um, the frequencies and properties of all the plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms, um, the consciousness of the earth elementals, such as water, fire, earth itself, um, all the different source rays that we worked with. So the etheric templates for the balance and harmony were huge. Now, within those etheric templates, we did put the energetics of everything before. So the energetic properties, uh, the frequencies of the 144, the 177, 188, everything that was created before that gets put into that etheric template so that is in the balance and harmony all of the rings that slim worked with now as we move forward that etheric template we keep building on everything that we've built on so now then even with our newest rings you can still find the energetics of the original spurling rings now also um and, and slim didn't Slim was not aware of etheric templates, higher dimensional tools. He was working here more on the physical. When our first etheric template, I believe, was actually the fire ring, which um, we took the, the sacred qubit, the 144 megahertz, and we created the etheric template for it that worked with the consciousness of electricity, the earth elementals, Gaia, for the purpose of restructuring electromagnetics in the household. Because before you could put one of those sacred cubit rings over an electrical meter, and it would harmonize everything within that field, within that column of light that comes out of the ring, just that straight column. But it wouldn't harmonize anything else throughout the electrical system. So in that sacred cubit, when we started to bring in that consciousness of electricity, and of the copper and the earth elementals as as all electrical are grounded into the earth then when you put that ring over your meter it would then follow the electrical forward and back uh, harmonizing that entire electromagnetic system so working with the consciousness of the tools has been fantastic now it is the soul it is your higher self that chooses what comes through the rings at any given time. Because within the rings, there's so much available. There are the frequencies and properties of all the plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms, the consciousness of water. Um, you know, all of that is available within the rings. But it is you that act as the filter that brings through whatever is in the highest and best for you at any given moment or is in the highest and best for anybody who is within, within the field of the tools. So as we've moved forward, this gives me an opportunity to kind of mention the new energies, which they do still carry the etheric templates, this new energy that we're working with. But the main power source component of this is you, your soul as a creator, as a son in a universe. Pretty powerful stuff if you can feel into that, and I feel a lot of you feeling into that. It's pretty powerful, and that is what is truly at the forefront of the energies in the new rings is you. Um, and all of that energy is there in support, everything that we put into the rings before that. Now, one of the questions, too, was about the spurling rings. Now, Slim actually is the one who brought forth the regeneration ring. So it was the, the gals at Dancing with Water and Slim and my sister Brenda and I who all co-created the regeneration ring. Now, that regeneration ring was a huge step as well in the tools because it started to bring in more consciousness 
into the physical. And so the regeneration that Slim brought forth for us and the, the regeneration ring did not have the etheric template. It came with its own structure, its own energetic, its own field. So the regeneration rings, we did not add in a bunch of our etheric template into it, but yet it still accesses everything within the etheric templates. Um, you know, and in the way you, you would access any of the energies out of those rings, especially like the everything ring is kind of like um, when you're working with water and you know that you want bergamot in your water, you put the ring on there, you just put your intention, asking the ring, the field of the ring, the water that's in the field, basically you're just asking the water as it is within the field of the ring to carry the energetics of bergamot. And there you go. It's like making a Bach flower remedy. And so the energetics are there to access with your intention or else you just stepping aside and allowing your soul to bring through the energetics that you need the most. Um, so that was a little bit about the, um, I, I hope, I hope I more than answered the question there for, uh, the etheric templates and the rings that slim helped us create. Now, I believe that we had, yes, here we have one more question here this morning from email. So this question is um, in regards to the wisdom ring. I have the wisdom ring, which I wear on my wrist. I have used it to create, to imagine to create a column of light in several places. Can the wisdom ring use the same energetic direction and staying power as the wisdom wands to be directed to create the column of light? So basically when, when you are using a, a tensor ring, you know, the tensor rings do create a column of light already. Now, when, when you are setting that light column with the wisdom ring, you are actually, you're actually just creating that light column yourself. And that's the same with using a wisdom wand is that this shows us the field. This helps us create the field. But once we know it, once we are attuned to it, we've had, you know, we, we know the field. It is our intention, our visualization, our imagination, our heart-based intention which creates that column of light. So you do not need a wand or a ring to create a column of light, but you do need to have the energetic attunement to the wand. So as you already know about the columns of light, I am going to assume that, you know, you already know how to create the column of light, which is simply doing the Trinity breath, um, earth, sky, and the column of light. And when you just simply use your visualization, imagination of creating that column of light, again, when you're using the ring, and let's say you're just holding the ring out there and you're imagining that this, you know, because it does create that column of light, and you're just imagining that column of light, let's say, sitting right here in, in this room that I'm in, and it just becomes a column. Now, I simply visualize and imagine and intend it's a soft intention because I'm doing the work. So that's my intention right there. So I'm imagining that this column of light is connecting to the heart of the earth, to the heart of creation, and that they are holding that column of light there for me. And then it's done. So, um, as far as, you know, working with the wisdom wand to me, it's not, um, you know, the active work of creating columns of light, you can do without a wand, without any tool. Um, running energy, the way you run energy with a wand, this wand creates a whole, it creates a different field than what, if you were just using this ring and you are shining, you're shining the energy, you're shining that onto something you're working on. It's great. It's creating that field of light, but the wisdom wand is, there's just a lot more to it um, as it is uh, creating that column of light. 
So apologies here, I need to let my daughter know I am doing um, a webinar, she's calling me. Okay, so um, the, the question about running that light with a ring versus a wand, definitely a wand is the way to go for running that energy. Um, so let me get back to the rest of that question. Um, okay, nope, that is everything. So yeah, and I guess the last part of that question is I'm considering to add the wisdom wand, will it be more beneficial? And definitely the wisdom wand, will, the energetics of the wisdom wand is gonna be a lot more beneficial than just using a wisdom ring because there's a lot more to it. And again, you can just get the, you know, you can access the energetics of the tool without having to own it. Um, but they're a fantastic tool to just carry on the person. I carry mine in my pocket all the time. But of course, I love my my pendant style to the silver. Um, anyway, we will jump over here to questions. All right. So, uh, Kindle, the water alchemy ring arrived Monday. Can you talk a little bit more about it? Ah, yay. So yeah, those of you who did receive that water alchemy ring. So the water alchemy ring is, we just updated our water rings page. So now we only have one water rings page for the copper water rings. We still have a silver water ring. And we're no longer carrying the harmonic creation field trio that we make for dancing with water they still carry it but um we've replaced it with the the alchemist trio just because just because um and so now we we also only sold the alchemist water rings in in the trios because that's the way it's so powerful but we now started to sell them as the singles um what really spurred that was this three and a quarter inch water alchemy ring that we have in the energetic transformation kit. This is the one that uh, I think about 30 of you received as a, as a gift in exchange for testimonial. Um, this particular ring is actually the new energy. Um, it's the new energy of the Taurus of the new, um, generators the wisdom generators that'll be coming out here hopefully today tonight um so the energetics of this ring that we sent out for people to work with it, it is it is a water ring it's it's the water alchemy ring but it's so much more than that it is carrying that that new energy that we're working with that is the soul as a creator and that blue heart of the earth um <clears throat> Renard will definitely be sharing my experiences with the water ring, but it made my water sweeter in taste. Can you speak to that? That was pleasantly unexpected. Yes. So basically with, um, with the water alchemist set and the water alchemy ring, it is bringing in the highest aspect of water, the consciousness of water. Um, when you bring that consciousness and that life back into water, water is so healing and supportive of, of humans um, and the earth. And so um, as it brings in that, that higher aspect of the water, you know, it, it, it changes the physical of the water. Um, you know, it just brings more consciousness through more light. Consciousness is light. And so your water is so much more higher in frequency and vibration um, using that water alchemy ring, which yes, affects the, the taste, the feel, the chemical, everything. Uh, Susanna, I got a few pendants, the wings of talk, wisdom wand and other wands. Can I wear them together? Most definitely. Um, you can never really get too much of the tensor fields. Um, what I do is, gosh, because I have so many pendants that 
<laughs> you know, set up my nightstand. So, well, these are the three that I, gosh, I don't go anywhere without these. I have the silver pendant wand, the silver wand, and the silver coil. These three seem to work really well together for me. Um, what I do in the morning is I'll get up, I'll look over at my nightstand, um, and, and this is for what, what pendants to wear. Um, so there's a couple ways that I'll do it, three ways that I'll do it. Either I just look over and one just pops out, it's bright, catches my attention, that's the one I put on. Or if I'm questioning my own self, Maybe I'll grab it and use a pendulum. Is this the one to wear today? Yes. Okay. Awesome. And maybe I'll have three or four on. The other way, which is um, doing the muscle testing with it, is going into the heart space, taking that tool, either, you know, if you're wearing your pendant, taking that pendant, putting it up to the sternum and asking your body, is this the one I should wear today? And if your body moves forward, then that's a yes. If your body is repelled, then that's a no. So, you know, asking your body is a great way. But fail safe, no, there's no harm in wearing every pendant we create all together. Um, Connie, thanks for the info about the infrared light. Does this the, the same apply to PEMF mats? Most definitely. Yes. Um, in, so any of the, like the amethyst mats, any of anything that is working with frequency, sound and light, the tensor fields are harmonizing and amplifying everything. So yeah, if you are running around with your, with your, um, amethyst mat, then totally adding a ring is going to enhance the experience. Um, Tara, what's the best tool to use at the elementary school I work at, which in the last year seems to have gone completely bonkers with behavior? I keep getting the two and a half inch golden fire generator at my desk at all times. I keep the two and a half. So I know the schools, um, having a golden fire generator in the schools is huge because it is working with everything from your lights to there's a lot of funky frequencies that that come through public schools and the golden fire generators harmonize they clear them they, they, they clear and release those those energies um including the ones that the kids bring with them every day um attachments all of that so the golden fire generator is a great one to keep things clear now you know like um Gosh, because for years my mom worked at um, at some of the reservation schools as a counselor, and she see kids that were in pretty bad shape, and she'd always have a, a larger golden fire generator sitting there. Uh, and when the kids come in to talk to her, she hands them the generator or, or Gaia sphere, whichever they have, um, and they just play with it, and they just sit there and hold it while they're talking. And then when they're done, it's just it just clears. Um, so. It's tough in school right now. My daughter's sixth grade girl. Oh my goodness. I don't know how these kids do it these days. Um, yeah, sixth grade girl's tough. So as far as working in the school, um, the golden fire generator is fantastic. <sighs> columns of light are great if you can do the columns of light. Um, the... The new, the new generators that we have coming out, the wisdom generators, are pretty fantastic. They they don't create a huge field though. They're they're about the size of you know a few classrooms, you know, the size of a small home, about the size of an average size home, is about the field that these new generators create, and they are bringing through a lot more. They are bringing through not only the energetics of the golden fire, but then also you know that that blue energy of the earth, that heart of the earth, um, as well as connecting every one of those kids whose, whose soul is on, on board with it to that, to that sun. Um, the other day in my daughter's volleyball game, I, 
anchored that field and that light and expanded that out and started to see the majority of people there in that gymnasium were going through the process that they were getting that blue enveloping heart light of Gaia around them and they were connecting to their their stars their their suns um so you know we can do the work ourselves if you can go through and just imagine that or imagine that within yourself and you radiating that out into the field um it's really a phenomenal way to do it, it you know and it's a self-empowering way to do it you know and totally you know i don't know i still feel that the wisdom generators would be quite a bit more beneficial in that space that it holds but i think just you being there holding that space and having your golden fire generator clearing the rest of the things um you know i i, I think that you can hold the space just as well as these but i i i'm still i guess what i'm saying for my answer is is that this space this space at the Taurus and that these new tools hold and that you can hold is what I, the space that I would hold for the kids at school. Um, just because it's the most powerful and transformative space that we are working in. Any advice on using the tools of tuning forks? I have the I am hoop at the head of the table and others on me in the room. So basically uh, working with tuning forks, you can I'd almost suggest, so, hey, look, we have these cool little $20 rings that have the new energy. They're called the new energy sampler, and they are on the, where are they at? I think they're on the prototype page, the prototype product page. Um, yeah, $20 little finger rings, heck of a deal on these things. Um, we have some that are flat as well as the round ones. But this size of ring, and in this energetic, is what I would suggest for the base of a tuning fork. If you use tuning forks, um, you know, if you put them directly onto the body as like acupressure, things like that, you know, because then you can put the ring then the butt of the tuning fork there. And that's fantastic. If you do the tuning forks in that way. Now, if you are doing a no touch, you're just working with the tuning forks in the field. Um, having that larger ring, to where if you are in the field of that larger ring, no matter what you're bringing in that field, it's going to harmonize in. So if you're using a tuning fork just on the auric field and you're having the person standing within that larger practitioner ring, then it is already doing the work. Um, otherwise, I know I, my mom uses tuning forks and, in, in, you know, I've considered different ways to use to amplify that. The only other thought is having, you know, like on a generator bracelet and you're using the tuning fork. And then with your intention, visualization, imagination, you run in your tuning fork and your bracelet and you're just imagining that whole thing enveloping and then harmonizing, synergizing, radiating out from there. Whew, yeah, that feels like the best one right there is um, wearing one of the generator bracelets holding the tuning fork if you're working in the auric field. And again, if you're working right on the body, one of the small rings is, is what I would say. Um, Kaz, using the Water Alchemy 3, the, the Water Alchemy 3 set on the water filters, can you intend to remove the calcium, magnesium, and iron from your water? So no, actually, like with fluoride, what we have seen with fluoride, not the naturally occurring fluoride, but the, the sodium fluoride that they put in water to, you know, to your pineal gland for every U.S. municipality, over 5,000 people are required to fluoride their water. Luckily, any municipality below 5,000 people is not a huge threat to society, so they don't have to fluoride their water. It's, you know, it's not good for your teeth. Um, what we see with the tensor fields is that with that, um, sodium fluoride that they add to the water, it's, it's changing it on a molecular structure that it is changing it into, so that it still has the same structure, but 
it's like instead of this nasty little shape, it's changed. It's changed its energy field. So that energy field of that fluoride then is no longer that funky field that is spiky and sticky and sticks. It becomes more of, you know, just like a little sun. It, it changes. It, it changes the energetic field of that fluoride. So then it is something that is beneficial. So as far as working on any other substances like the calcium, magnesium, iron. Now for a lot of us that have hard water and we have to go through our hot water heaters and, and drain them and pull out all the crap all the time. Um, and then same with like toilet bowls, things like that. You can tell you have hard water because of that deposit. Now what the tensor fields are doing with that water, if we put a larger tensor ring on our hot water heater or on the toilet bowl or in the toilet bowl, then what happens is that it's not changing the chemical makeup. You still have magnesium and calcium, but what it does is it changes the bonding of that magnesium and calcium so it doesn't just stick to everything. It basically makes it so it just falls out of the water um, and then it just flushes right out. So the, the tensor fields are going to, you know, allow for the unsticking of some of those substances which is why it is so phenomenal if you're going to do reverse osmosis you can run your put your ring um put your rings before and after the reverse osmosis because then you get a better filtration um, because of the unbonding of the molecules on jr can you please explain what will happen if i use the wisdom wand and a nine and a half inch harmonizer ring in between the item in the wand or the ring behind the wand, which is more beneficial. So let's see. So the question is using like the nine and a half inch harmonizer ring, which I usually carry with my computer. I don't have it today. I love my nine and a half inch harmonizer ring. I always use it under my laptop. That's one of my favorite um, energetics for EMF the harmonizer. So if you, the question is, is if you're using a ring and your wand together, your, your wisdom wand, um, which is more potent? Um, I would say that your wand within the ring is, is to me, is the most potent. Um, so if you are wanding an item, so let's say I have my water here and I'm wanting my water, whether you would put the ring on the other side of the water or on this side. And I'd almost say that you have the water bottle here, you have the ring here, and you're wanding through the ring to the item that you're working on. To me, that feels, feels the most potent with it, um, is just wanding through the ring. Uh, Kendall, I noticed the new wisdom generator is a bracelet generator. Will there be wisdom generators that's not a bracelet? Um, so, gosh, Kendall, that's really a good question. I really do not know exactly where we are going with this new energy. It is not even a name for this new energy, this um, central soul sun and the, the blue heart of the earth. But those energies this new energy you know, let's call it new energy is currently in the taurus these 20 dollar rings on the prototype page they will be released in the two sizes of generator bracelets as well as the water alchemy ring and we will have the alchemist tab which is like the gateway tab that will be released here next week as well and that's going to be pretty fantastic um so that's all we have in the new energy right now and we're just going to keep playing with this and i know that that is where we are going with all of the tools eventually is in this new energy it is it's it's the most profound it's the most personal it's bringing through you it is it's connecting your meat suit 
with with the earth with creation of the physical um it's it's an amazing amazing energy and so this is going to be where eventually all the tools are going to get moved to here but who knows if that's going to be this year or 10 years from now because um we just kind of need to wait and see how people respond to this energy and i really feel they're going to respond really positively to it's just that some people had some really negative responses to things like the regeneration ring um there are other tools after that the chalice there's a lot of those tools that people and even in the readings would say they'll run from them um because they are making them face things like the regeneration ring would bring up dark things but it's your stuff it's not like it brought in something dark from outside of you um but i really think that the new tool the, the this new field is going to be acceptable and embraced by everybody in the cosmos so if that's the case then we'll move quicker with making new tools such as a you know, a tensor field generator in that particular energetic. So yeah, just keep an eye out. We'll definitely be making a lot more tools in this energetic. Um, uh, Venetia, so anyone tried gold plating the tools? Any thoughts on energetics? Yes, so Slim used to always, well, not always, Slim used to, to electroplate the tools. He would take copper and you can't uh, plate gold onto copper because there's an alchemy that happens and it turns into copper. Yeah, copper can turn gold into copper. I think that's a cool concept. So you can't, uh, so what Slim would do then is he would take a copper ring and he would electroplate silver, then gold, silver, gold, silver, gold. They did nine layers of this silver gold. And so Slim was always looking for ways to amplify the tools in the physical because he was did not realize about the true power and potency of the tools lies in the etheric templates, the higher dimensional aspect of the tools. But he worked with everything on the physical. That's why he put copper beads on his rings. That's why he did the electroplating. So when you electroplate gold onto the tensor ring, and I have quite a few that some friends and friends of slims have made and gifted to me over the years and there's a subtle there's a subtle change um but i really don't i don't feel it's um anything much more than aesthetic there there is subtle a subtle energy shift to it but um to me it's not enough to step into electroplate gold electroplate the tools We've actually considered it um, back in the beginning. Um, we certainly considered doing the electroplating. I even tried electroplating with silver and it just didn't work out. So I didn't even get to the gold aspect. But um, you can certainly have your tools plated too. So if you do like the, the, the whole concept of having a gold plated tool, um, you know, for, for the aesthetics, um, yeah, you can certainly do that without any harm. Uh, to the energetics and of course it will bring a little bit more because it's just like putting a piece of gold inside of the ring is going to be basically emitting that that energetics of of the gold uh, next question can we place a ring under the tank of the car reduced consumption so that was one of the big things um back in slim's day is that a lot of people would and still do take a ring and they will put it over their their gas um over their gas tank when they're fueling so they're fueling and they're fueling through the ring and a lot of people swear that they get better gas mileage by doing this um just like some of the things that you can put in line filters harmonizers things like that in your fuel and yes we do see that some people get better gas mileage, maybe better emissions, but it is not actually because of the tensor ring. It is because of their intention as a powerful creator and manifester that you are. The tensor ring actually didn't do anything to the gasoline. It was your intent, you, that made the change to get your car better gas mileage. 
Um, so as far though, you know, but that is still a good question about reduced consumption or even, you know, reduced emissions, um, would be interesting to, to really know. And I do know that like for, um, you know, like the, the oil, the oil in your engine, um, oils take a spin you know with the spin rate of a uh, of the rings you can really amp up oil um so perhaps it can uh actually do something if you actually put the ring under the tank because when you are filling the tank your nozzles through there it's just like putting this over the shower head it's not going to do anything but clear the memory of the water or the gasoline or whatever is going through it the liquid it's not going to physically do the restructuring unless the ring sits there with that gasoline for four to six hours with the traditional rings or two to four hours with the alchemist set um so or instantly if you do i think it's the december 3rd meditation of bringing in um consciousness of water into water that you can restructure water instantly so maybe there's consciousness to gasoline i don't know um maybe that's one way to work with it too hey at all can we turn copper into gold also yeah good question i don't know um you know it'd be be interesting to see if you do electroplate because i think really what happens with that electroplating the gold and copper um i'm not sure I don't think it actually turns the gold into copper, but it, it, it absorbs it in. Um, and I think that if you, I feel that if you electroplate copper onto gold, it would do the same thing that the gold would absorb in the, the, the copper onto, into the surface. Um, but that's some physical alchemy there for sure. Uh, Susanna, what ring can we put in the car for protection? So, um, the tensor rings, and again, a ring is only going to create a column of energy. So within your car, if you use a ring, I actually put like a 15-inch golden fire ring as is a perfect one for under the seat or uh, the water alchemist rings. I put rings under my seat and behind my seat. Definitely. I would like to do that because then I'm always in that column of light and it is, is working for me. But most of us will put... Um, a tensor field generator or a pyramid. My car is the dash. You can see me coming because I have pyramids in the dash. And actually on the hood ornament, I have an activator permanently attached to the hood of my car. I've always had an activator permanently attached to the hood of the car. Um, but for, for vehicles, you know, we usually suggest putting a tensor field generator in the vehicle um, because usually most of most of us aren't that far from our car so like a golden fire generator that has a sphere of influence of two and a half miles you put that in your vehicle and it will cover you when you're at home when you're at work with the grocery store when you are on your commute and if you live in the city oh my goodness i totally encourage everybody to carry a golden fire while well, any tensor field generator in your car uh because it just helps clearing everybody that you see as you're cruising through town in the cities. Um, so tensor field generators are a great one for the vehicle. And of course, um, I don't, we're waiting on the time study. We're finishing up the time study this morning on these generators. I don't know how much they are. They're, they're, they're over a hundred bucks. Um, but the wisdom generator is one that, if you're going to get any tensor field generator at this point, I would certainly consider the wisdom generator just because of the, the newer energetics that are in these. Um, Tara, I have the divine. I am tensor field generator sitting on a shelf at the apex of my Russian pyramid, which is in my den with the computers, router, modem, etc. Is this the best place for it? I also have the Wi-Fi ring on your modem. Maybe I should move that to the electrical box. Um, so yes, actually, if you have a generator in your home, um, you really don't need a Wi-Fi ring on your router unless you're always within like 18 inches of your router. Otherwise, 
your generator will clear it. Um, and having the generator sitting at, near the apex of the pyramid is absolutely the best place to have it. That's a phenomenal place because basically if you use that apex of the pyramid and you have a generator sitting on top of that, it is taking that, that energetic focal point of that pyramid because they always produce a, a, a light coming out of them. And then that goes in the generator and the generator then disperses it, it, it sends it out, it broadcasts it. So having a generator on top of your pyramid is a phenomenal place. Now, as far as I do agree that you should take your Wi-Fi ring off your router and put it onto your electrical panel. Um, just because, like I say, your generator is covering everything for the Wi-Fi and um, having something on your electrical panel will just ensure that if you are spending time within that five and a half to six feet of your electrical panel or your or your meter or within 18 inches of your um, plugins, you know, most of us have plugins right by our beds. And so, you know, if you're within 18 inches of that, then having that Wi-Fi ring on your um, fuse panel will take care of that as well. So let's see. Um, let me jump over here to the polls. Oh, shoot. I'm not sure. Oh, yay. We did have some votes. Oh, my goodness. So there's only 14 of you guys that voted on the polls here for one hour before or five minutes before your before the time comes on. So we're pretty close to half and half whether you guys would like to receive an email an hour before or five minutes before. So uh, we'll either feel into it or flip a coin here since we're, <laughs> we're about half and half. Um, I'll check the polls here when we're done. All right. <laughs> I was just reading some comments about <laughs> Matthias. It made my water feel so expensive. <laughs> I don't know if you meant expansive, but <laughs> expensive. I like that one too. Yeah, the, the new watering is pretty fantastic for the water. Um, yeah, again, just. Jumping over here to chat and um, <sighs> all right, so I suppose let's jump through another meditation. Let's hold that space again, you guys, because it's such a phenomenal space, um, you know, that we did last week. So let's do a meditation again. Um, And yeah, just keep playing with this whole concept. Um, you know, so again, the meditation that we're going to do is, is basically, you know, connecting, it, it's connecting to the earth, it's connecting to creation. But the creation point that we see that we're connecting to right now, um, with the help of these fields and the help of the universe, because Everything just opened up as we are halfway in this great shift. Right now, we're able to start to do these things, uh, which is um, connecting to ourself as a creator. We always know, we've always known that we are powerful creators. One of the ascension chambers that we created um, here a few years ago would take you to a space to where you were this great big sun. You were a central sun in this entire universe, and it was all you. That was quite the concept. But then when this came through, that's kind of why I was so ecstatic last week is because this really is huge, 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 that we are introducing ourselves to who we are. Um, it's, it's so much bigger than what we could even imagine. So as we do this um, meditation and after we connect in, so basically we'll connect with the earth, the heart of the earth and, and have, and we're just imagining and asking, intending, allowing that blue energy, that blue light of the heart of the earth to come and envelop us. And we'll hold that for a few moments until we feel like we're ready to connect up to that giant sun that giant sun, which is our soul, that is us as creator. 
and we hold that space and it is so transformative truly is you know i think the end all space for the tools is this particular space um so here we go let's jump through the meditation so just closing your eyes connecting to that beautiful heart of the earth that beautiful peaceful blue light that just comes up from the heart of the earth and envelops your human in the here now moment wrapping you up and feel that flow opening up and opening up and allowing that sun you as a creator to shine into you and it shines into the heart of the earth and the heart of the earth shines into you just feel everything raising in vibration and frequency you just lifting off the ground all that no longer serves just flows flows into the earth as she welcomes it transforms it for you she is here in service as she loves us all so just allow her to assist in the taking away of those things that no longer serve us throughout our entire existence. As our soul brings in more and more of what no longer serves us. And all of that which is not shed off for the earth to transform your sun, your light comes in and alchemizes it. Alchemizes any of those energies that remain into something new, into a new energy of creation. Absolutely beautiful. All right. Hold yourself in that space. And gently hold that space for the rest of the world, all of humanity and beyond. Just imagining that expanding and all across the earth, all the humans looking like these little to me, it presents as like this little blue teardrop, like a flower bulb, mostly under the ground. And the tip of that bulb is the human right there. And that beautiful blue energy of the earth envelops all those people, all those humans. And now we see the sky just starting to dot with all of those suns. As all of those suns come down into the heart of the humans. Just holding that with joy, not trying to change the world or people or transmute. We're just inviting them to step into their beingness, to be supported by the earth. seeing all your loved ones in that space. Whether they are still here or not. Watching as this transcends all of time. And all of space.
we start here on this beautiful blue planet and we just allow it to expand into all of creation. And remember, you are creation and creator. All right, enjoy everybody. And we will see you in two weeks, unless you are in Wisconsin next weekend.